she started really well, which is good. I'm just going to uh, make sure that I give her quite a nice long run up because this will be the first flight since we did the engineering work and actually the first flight in quite some considerable time. And we're just about to go. Okay. Everybody happy? Everybody happy? <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm on my own. Well, I say that, but I'm probably thinking about you as a viewer. Oh, a nice little wobbly through the, through the valley there. I think we'll know about that on the way back. Little did I know what was going to happen a few minutes later. This is only going to be just a quick little test that we are flying okay. I'm going to bring the power back a little bit. It turned out to be much quicker than I had anticipated. Right, well, basically, um, ELB took it away, had a look at it. We suspected and hoped it was a sticky valve, which is what they've actually said. So they cleaned that all up, but because we gave them everything, they were able to check piston rings and bores and everything else. We are back in the air. Uh, I am a little bit preoccupied at the moment with the oil pressure, which does seem really quite low. This was an understatement. I'd been watching the oil pressure very slowly uh, begin to drop and at this point it was dropping quite quickly. So although I sounded calm, it was beginning to worry me big time. This will be a quick circuit. It's only reading about 15 pounds per square inch at the moment. It usually does more than that. As I flew back towards the airfield, I was actually going through in my mind all sorts of eventuality and trying to plan what may or may not be happening in the next few minutes. I'm going to make this one a very, very short one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hatched and harness, brakes are off, carb heat I'll use in a minute. A bit concerned that when I bring the power off, that oil pressure is going to drop even further. And I do need to keep the power on in order to overcome the curl over on the hill. But we'll just do it as a balance. I knew I needed to play it safe and stay high but I was also slightly worried about the fact that I wasn't sure quite how the valley was going to behave so I didn't want to find myself too far up the hill. Deliberately flying this very very high There was a deer earlier but I can't see it Right, let's take a little look and see what's happened.
My name is Tim Palmer. I fly a Jodel DR1050 out of this farm strip in East Anglia. thing I was expecting was to see tons and tons of oil everywhere but I can't it seems fairly dry you see there I haven't lost any so the oil the oil is Fine. Not got any signs of any oil anywhere around there. I mean, this locker box that we moved, maybe there's just a weep, but nothing more than a weep. We did do that, but there's nothing, nothing majorly there. Can't see anything. And as far as the oil sender is concerned, I don't think I can really film it easily. But if we come the other side, maybe. Maybe there's a bit of movement on there. I, I don't know. It's, it's the way that it's it's been. Uh, I'll go around and tighten everything up and see what happens. But there's no obvious oil leak. Well, I've gone through and tightened everything. Gave a half a turn on most of those. Checked that that was all tight. And we'll just see what the compressions are saying. Good. Okay, master switch can go on. Mixture is rich, cabin heat is cold, fuel pump is on. I'm on the front tank. I know I've got 45 litres in there. Take the mag off, put it in. I just do a turnover. Okay. Mags go to both. Fuel pump is still on. Give it one, two, three, four, and a little bit. Clear prop! Going up to 40. Up 
pressure's up at 40. Ticking over. As I say, I'll let it warm up for a while. I don't know whether this is going to work. Um, <laughs> get a little bit confused now which camera I'm going to be talking to, but I've, I've got this one here now. Um, uh, but yeah, I've got this chest cam in order to try and film this for everybody and also for me to be able to look and see whether it's going to do the same thing as it did last time. I don't know what it was all about because I was expecting to find oil absolutely everywhere. Um, but there wasn't. There was no real increase in oil temperature, but there again, would that have increased if there was no oil? I, would, I assumed it would have um, But yeah, I was expecting to find it sort of spluttered everywhere. But we had hardly, well, we hadn't used any oil. Um, there was a, the slightest um, seep under that rocker box cover that we did the work on. Um, and maybe just a little bit under the spin of one filter which we'd taken off. Um, there was a certain amount of play where the capillary goes into the back of the filter, the old filter, but I don't, I don't know, I, I can't really say that that is something different or new because I, I haven't done it before sort of thing. Um, but here we are, we're still on 40 pounds per square inch and it's just beginning to lift now. I know that this looks really weird but I have to do a Quasimodo thing because I've got to reach across with my left hand in order to hold the brake while I do everything I need to do with my right hand which will probably mean that this camera won't actually show what I need to be looking at. But anyway, let's put a bit of power on. Still got 40 pounds per square inch. Everything's sounding okay, feeling okay. I'm gonna go as fast as I can, but I know that it's not going to go much beyond uh, brakes aren't holding it there now. But it does seem to be holding up in terms of pressure. Okay. Well, you can see from the windsock we're going to have a nice one to take off with, but yet again the tailwind to land with. I am going to have to try and come over and cut the grass. John and I need to try and work on the track to make sure that that's going. It hasn't gone through the winter. Here on the approach. Oil pressure is still up. Fine. Master is on. Cabin heat is cold at the uh, car heat is cold at the moment. Mixture is rich. Kevin heater is cold. Fuel pump is on. I'm on the front tank. I've got 45 litres. I know that because I dipped it. I've got controls doing what they should be doing. Radio on. It's just a blow of cold air. Well, hot air rather, because it is registering just a little bit into the yellow. Let's put the transponder on. 180 feet. Okay. Uh, mole hills, there are mole mountains down there.
Well, as I said, I thought she would uh, lift off fairly well, which she did. Um, blowy through the valley, but not quite as bad as it was last time. It'll be interesting to have a look at this camera and see what happens with looking at the gauges in a way that I don't normally do. Um, oh, I'm on 42 pounds per square inch now. Try and bring down the EGT and the CHT. Oil temperature is now coming up to 60. I'm holding a straight 40, which is what it usually does. I really don't know what happened, but when I came into land, it was down there at five pounds per square inch. Nigel saw me land, he was walking the dog, and he did actually say he thought that it was a really good landing, and then I had coped the conditions really well. He didn't realise what was happening inside my head, but. Okay, I am going to switch everything off now for a while, so the main cameras are coming off. And this camera is coming off. Well, we've been flying around for uh, about 45 minutes. O oil pressure's dropped down a little bit. I've brought the power off. I had been flying around at basically 27, which is quite fast. 2750 is red line. But I did read someone say that they thought that these engines do operate better at near near max. So I thought I would I would do that. Um, it's not due to rain or, or anything, although I have to say. It's looking a little bit on the uh, cloudy side as we go back in. Um, I can I can easily see Nayland there. The thing about Nayland is the fact that there's that um, lane up the side, which actually is now quite sandy. So that shows up quite a lot. Um, oil temperature is coming up to. 100, which is quite high, um, but there again, it's a reasonably hot day. Um, we're beginning to get some summer heat, well, spring heat into into our days, and according to the forecast, we should have a couple of weeks now of pretty good weather, pretty hot weather down now to about 32 pounds per square inch which is the better than the 15 and descending which is what I had here last time so I'm coming overhead it's funny after you've had some work and after you've had something go a little bit awry it just sort of heightens the, the senses and whereby, you know, for ages, I would just sort of sit and enjoy my flying. I am enjoying my flying, don't get me wrong, this is, this is really nice. But in the back of your mind, you're always listening for that extra beat, or, or can you feel anything coming up through the controls? Bayland traffic, go for Alpha Yankee Echo Hotel. My car's there, nobody else, and yes, we've still got a bit of a strong I don't know where it's strong but it is very much a tailwind to land 
right on the tail. Earlier on I worked out that it was 12 knots but I don't know whether it will be that now. In a moment I'll turn in to wind and then we'll have a little look. Yeah, that puts us sort of into wind. Uh, ground speed of 70, air speed of 90. Yay, hatches! Oh, there. Harness is there, wrapped around the camera. Brake is off. Don't need curb heat for a moment or two. There's nobody gliding. For fear of going over the same stuff time and time again, I have to say, I did say for a long time that there wasn't much happening at the building site, and there wasn't, but it's beginning to now. Need to make sure I'm back into the white arc, which means less than 80 knots. I think we'll go sideways for a while. Break down. Nayland traffic over the Yankee Echo Hotel final Nayland traffic. We're down to about 28 pounds oil pressure. It always chooses this time to flag up the fact that there's an antenna in here ahead. Yes, there's two and I had about 2.9 miles away. We're going to land. I think we do need to come down. I did notice on takeoff that there was a deer on the left-hand side, which will be the right-hand side as we come in now. Can't see anything at the moment. one on such a cliffhanger but we did the Hurricane Heritage one um, thanks to Matt for inviting us along for that I think he enjoyed having his dad there and I know that John was particularly proud to be there um, I actually thought that was going to get more response than it has but you could never tell whereas that one which I said I pushed it in and pushed it out etc etc which was an absolutely nothing one, had four and a half thousand, so you know, I, I don't know, but for those people that are sticking with me every single week um, and leaving me comments especially, I do appreciate the support, thank you very much, and uh, yeah, um, I did get down last time safely, uh, and <laughs> we've done it again now. Anyway, thanks a lot, and uh, uh, hopefully you'll be with me again next week. Cheerio.